yesterday. We want to thank everyone that is here uh, with us watching uh, live. And we just are so grateful for our God. Amen. He is faithful and good in all his ways. Hallelujah. We just are excited uh, of just even the protocol and regulations that are being lifted little by little, but yet still being wise uh, in uh, maintaining uh, protocol of uh, making sure that uh, we do what we need to do in social distancing and uh, what we need to do. And we know God is doing good and great things. So let us begin in a word of prayer today. Amen. Heavenly Father, we love you today. We exalt your name. Father, you are faithful. You are just in all your ways. Lord, we are hungry. Lord, we are thirsty for you. God, that you would fill this place with your presence, with your peace, that you would fill those homes right now that are watching online. God, touch their lives. Father, we want more of you. We know that you're in control. But Lord, we are declaring, Lord, fill our homes, fill our lives with more of you. Father, we ask you to open up your windows of heaven over us. Shut the gates of hell. Father, we bind everything in, in the name of Jesus. God, and we come together with all those, Father, that are ready to magnify, ready to glorify your name that is above every name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise as we begin to worship him this morning. Thank you. 
set firm foundation that no matter what happens, God is stable. God is in control. God is faithful. Hallelujah, church. Just say, Lord, have your way. Father, you're open heaven over my sanctuary, over my home, over my life. Lord God, you called us to be a worshiper that worships you in spirit and in truth. God, through all that's happening, Lord, there's so many voices, so many things being said, but there's one constant voice that tells me that I am saved, that I am yours, and that you love me. Lord, I always respond to you in your word and in truth that, Lord, I am who you say I am.
able to praise his word. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, you're more than enough. We say yes to your will. We say yes to your way. Holy Spirit, come. Continue to fill this place. Oh, touch those, Lord God, that are all I touch their homes. Continue to touch their life. Let their faith be established. Let their faith be sure as we declare you as the Lord of our homes, the Lord of this place, the Lord of our lives. Because I know, Lord, that when I come into the Father's house, how many know everything gets better? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes on this journey, get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a campus for the strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. And if you want to find me, cause that's what my father does. Yeah, if you want to find me, that's what my father does.
that you feel the presence of God. Amen. Give him a praise. That you feel the presence of God in that sanctuary you've created for him. He is here and in this place. Hallelujah. He is faithful. He is more than enough. How we believe what the word of God declares. That in his name, for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Amen. Our sons and daughters. Those that are away from the Lord. I'm telling you, we've been praying, we've been declaring, and know that there is a Father's house awaiting them. Amen. Hallelujah. But in their, their sanctuary, God is visiting you. God is touching you because He inhabits the praises of His people. He said, there's a name that's above every name. It's more powerful, more strong. There is no human name that can compare. There's no comparable name to the name of Jesus. How many know that name saved you? That name forgave you? That name restored you? That name is unconditional to you and it loves you and wants you. What a beautiful name that we have to declare unto our lives that every day that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs>
He's alive with resurrection power. He is good and faithful. Church, we love you. Just want to remind you, before this video, there are links there that you can click on there and you can give online. I want to just say thank you for all those that have come by as well to drop off their tithe and their offering. Thank you because of your continued support and giving and your faithfulness. Church is going on as usual. Amen. And we're doing great things for God and others that are watching online. We are able to do all this because your continued faithfulness to the house of God. We want to say thank you and that would God continue to bless you as we pick up our offering at this time. Father, we come to you. We magnify your name that is above every name. God, we call it in right now, even now from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Father, Father, the finances that are yours and belong to you. I ask you to bless the gift and the giver. I thank you, God, that so many even here that we still have our jobs. We are so grateful. But we pray for those, Lord, for peace. That you make a provision for even those that have been laid off or on furlough. God, give them your peace. Let them know that you are Jehovah Jireh, their provider. Lord, you shall supply all our needs. Because, Lord... You are our chief cornerstone. You're immovable. You are foundational. You cannot be overpowered. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. If you believe that, give the Lord a praise. Amen. Because he is faithful and worthy of it all. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
He's worthy to be lifted, worthy to be magnified. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word of God this morning? Hallelujah. Get ready. You can uh, just get your word ready, get your phone ready for whatever you need to get ready. Get your paper ready, get your notepad, whatever you want to do here. Y'all can have a seat, those that are here. So glad that you're here uh, this morning. Hallelujah. All right. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you, there are so many that uh, went out, went to the, some went to the river, some went to the park. I mean, there were just people sharing on Facebook what they did with the reopening of some things. I drove by when I went through the city. I usually like to look in Garcia's when they have all the lights on. I can see everybody just going like that and just wishing they could have their plate. But I drove by and I usually see people there. They're distant and, and, and eating and, and, you know, trying to get our things back to, to, to a normal. Some things will be, some things won't. But I just want to encourage you that uh, our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Those watching, I want to encourage you today, listen, He is faithful. Embrace the Word of God like never before in your life. I don't know about you, you know, some people would think, man, I'm just home and I'm bored. I get it. Maybe there's not many extracurricular activities. And maybe so. I mean, man, you can go in your yard, barbecue, go run around there in your yard and get things done. But one thing that I have seen for me, I was thinking, my goodness, is what else can I work on more on my life? I want you to, to, to look at that for a little bit. Have you done anything different about your own personal walk? Or is it the same? Is it on neutral? I, I want to encourage you. Have you said, I have so much time on my hands. For what? To do what? And I'm telling you, now that there's a stillness because we're at home so much, do you know that God has our attention? It's quieter. We're not so busy. And I want to encourage you for the remaining time, not just for when we're still sheltered in this protocol. I want you, even this thing is lifted, how much we need our quiet time with God. And I really want to, to encourage you there at home and those that are still there. What have you done? Has, have you moved up the bar in your walk with God? Are you reading more? Are, are, are you spending time more in prayer? Listen, along with being excited to be in here, God's excited to be with you at home. This is where we bring the overflow, but where you live in is every day in your home. I said, but yeah, but I come to church. This is where it's quiet. At home, it is not quiet. I get it, right? More so now, we're like, uh, right? Your name is called more than you know, anything else right now. Hey, you, honey, yeah, yeah, da da I was just over there, and uh, you know, the living room is not even that far, right? But you went to the kitchen to get something, and then you went to go get it. You didn't bring me a fork. You didn't bring me this. It's not even that far. I'll go get it, baby. I'll do this. Just things, things are different, you know? Things are different, and you get to even see more how people are. But I want to encourage you today. I want to speak on some areas of our life that we must continue to be active on a daily basis. Because in this, in this quarantine or this sh uh, shelter, you know that things can become inactive pretty quick. That recliner looks pretty what? Oh yeah, that bedroom's not too far away, that sofa, that TV. And I wanna encourage us today, that the Lord wants you to continue to be active with him and in him on a daily basis. Now every day, church, we make choices of how we respond to people. More so now, we respond to our job situation, those that are married, to marriage, to people in our lives, to parenting, to family life, to money decisions, even our, our relationship with God, etc. The list goes on more so even now. You see, some of us don't like it to be there, especially for our our. our uh, our golden age. You know, you don't get to go out. I mean, you're tired against being stuck in there, right? Let me go do something. I'm not talking about just walking out 
Let me go to Walmart even if I don't buy nothing, you know? I don't want the mask on anymore. I can I, I hear you. But right now, so many things are going on at one time, ain't there? They're much more concentrated. Things are used to being spaced out. And when there's another issue, another grandson, another uh, grandchild, it, it, it's always been busy, but it feels like it's just there and it doesn't leave. But I want to encourage you to ask yourself this question. What is your faith saying right now? What is your faith saying? Do, do you have a faith that is saying, I'm trusting, I'm still, I'm still believing, I'm still following, I'm still growing. This can be a very difficult area or part in our homes, in our lives, that we have stopped growing. And we just get into a circle and a miracle round. But I want to encourage us today in three areas to be constant. One is stand on his ground, not yours. Stand on the word of God and not ours. When we stand on our own ground, that is not a safe place. Amen. Our ground is shaky. But when we stand on God's ground, his ground is solid and firm. Amen. His word is solid and firm. In the book of Matthew chapter 7. The book of Matthew chapter 7, 24 through 26. It says, anyone who listens. I don't know if it just gets a recorder, right? Those that live at home, take out the trash, do this, do that. You sound like a broken record, you know? Those at home, didn't I tell you to do this? Oh yeah, I was going to do it. But since we're in close proximity, I'll get it in a little bit. So we got to understand we got to keep moving. We got to keep growing. In the book of Matthew chapter 7, 24 through 26, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock, though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand. Church, as we continue in this social distancing and these regulations, I want to encourage the body of Christ. We must continue to live a life that is pleasing to the Lord. This is not the time for a pit stop. This is not the time to recline in our relationship with God. But more so, it's a, it's a self-initiative in your walk with God. Uh, yeah, I'm ready to get back to everything to normal. But I just want to encourage you, God has been just, uh, he hasn't done it like that, but God has just been hammering my spirit. And he's been stretching me in this time, like I've never seen it before in me. And he has been speaking to me. Why? Because we're at home. I mean, we're still busy. We, we, there's a lot still to do. I'm telling you, I was like, Lord, after this, I should be like Mr. Clean. So should my house. It should smell like Mr. Clean 24-7. As much as we're in there, right? It should smell like Fabuloso, Pine Soul, something. And something like, oh, I'll get it over there. You get relaxed, right, in the physical. I'll get it in a minute. I'm going to pass by there in a minute anyway. I'll get it, get it away. But I, I want us to be awakened in our spirit because I, I believe sometimes in our spirit we can get comfortable. In our spirit we can put it in park and maybe make a pit stop. But we have to continue to live a life that is pleasing, not to us, but to who? To the Lord. Let us continue, church, in our faith, understanding he is our strength and our encouragement. Look, I want to throw this in there right now. This is one of the greatest times for worship time. Turn that phone on, turn that little speaker on, put on some worship. While you're clean, while you're getting done, I'm telling, this is what the Lord said, listen, if you would just come to me, 
And Spirit, I, I will fill your house. I will touch your mind. I will touch your body. And there are just times I would just put on the speaker. I said, God, what are you saying? He said, listen, when I when being sheltered in place doesn't mean to be sheltered away from me. These are moments and times that I want to speak. Now, now hear what, what God is doing to me. God wants to speak to you privately about you. He wants to speak privately about your spouse. He wants to speak privately about your sons and your daughters. Listen, I, those that they're your sons and daughters that are away from the Lord, just giving you a little homework. What have you done to think about them in this moment? And, time? Well, and I understand this saying, I'm just leaving it what in God's. That's right. You can't make nobody serve anybody, serve God. Huh? But you, but let me pray without what? Don't stop praying for, for Junior, for Johnny and Susie. Do not get comfortable so lax that you forget about to stay, about being active in your faith. Listen, I, I, this is what I believe. I believe you should be more sensitive. This is me. I'm just, this is just my, in your worship than ever before when you get back to this place. That's if you're doing it at home. It is not to park your faith. It is not to park your growth. It is not to park your devotion. It is, it, listen, I know that there, but there's probably quiet times like you've never, you say, God, what are you saying to me? Knowing that he is our rock in these times and will continue to be as we keep our faith in him. We know that he's the rock. But there is a desire from God that we continue to be active in our faith and our relationship with him. This is not a pit stop moment. This is a prayer moment. It's a private moment. It's a moment that we get away with God. And he begins to stretch us. Because you see your family, you see really who they are. Then you see who really would not. Just please hear the heart of your pastor. I want you to be honest with yourself. What have you done to up the bar to get closer to God in this time? Because he's ready to pour himself out. He's ready. He's ready. The book of Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am placing. Listen, I want you to receive this. The scripture I am placing, Isaiah 28, 16. I am placing a foundation stone in Jerusalem, a firm and tested stone. It is as precious, it is a precious cornerstone that is safe to build on. That is safe to build on. We need to continue to build on Christ. We need to continue to walk in Christ. Whoever believes need never be shaken. This rock, this Jesus is unshakable. And I'm telling you what. I don't know about you. But there has been some battles and fights. In the midnight hour. Still, And I said God what's happening. He says son. Do you know there's still a heaven. Yes. He says let me tell you what. There's still a hell coming after you. Wants to come after your family. Wants to come after your church. He wants to. He, the, the enemy wants you to, just to, to dilute yourself. But let me tell you what. The kingdom of God is still open. And the hell is still open. But greater is he that is in me. Than he that is in me. It's not time for a pit stop. But it's time to stop and begin to pray. And hunger and thirst after God. Because there is a battle that is still raging in the heavenly. And God want you to be prepared and ready for what's at hand. Oh, I, I wish I could say I just would go home after today and sit, not do anything. But I hear him clearly, more clearly than I ever been in, in these days of my life. And I can hear him say, I'm moving. He says, and you need to move with me. Come on. I am moving. And you need to move with me. I, I'm not trying to bring fear or to distill your faith. But I'm telling you, do you know there is still an enemy like seeking whom he can devour? He's trying to destroy. He's trying to, anybody falling asleep, the enemy's going to come in and swiftly. But those 
that are active in their faith. Begin to understand the Jesus that they serve. He's an unshakable God. Oh, I'm telling you, God is wanting you to get your spiritual arsenal ready. Where is your faith? How strong is your belief system? Where is your stance? Where? What have you done? Have you gone into, you know, when, when you deal with people in law enforcement or, or when you're in the military, do you know there's an armor room, an armory? And everything that armory is everything that they need to go on defense or offense, offense. They have all the weaponry there. I'm asking you. The Lord is looking in your armory. What do you have established in your spirit when it comes to the things of God? The armory, the strength, the power, the anointing, the glory. It's just not going to fall on you just because you hear the word or you come to church. It comes after Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those that what? Hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be what? Look, the only way I know uh, two things that I know that hunger and thirst come. That you've not eaten, you've been in prison, and you're and they don't feed you. That's how hunger and thirst can come in one way. But there's another way that hunger and thirst can come. Ask an athlete. Let him run a marathon. And after he's done with that marathon, what do you think he wants? water. If he keeps running, he's going to get hungry. You see, the difference is the one, he's not given anything. He doesn't have an option. He's not in control of what he can give himself. But the one that's the athlete, the reason he gets stronger and he's fed is because he puts his body into training to cause the hunger and thirst to happen within his life. And I'm asking the body of Christ, there needs to be a stirring of hunger and thirst for the things of righteousness. You must get up and say, Lord, touch me. Lord, I'm coming after you. Lord, I'm praying. Lord, I'm believing. And I want you to know those that are wrong. I'm asking you that you would allow the Spirit of God to move on your life and go after Him. Train your spirit to be hungry and thirsty after God. But you be, must be active in your walk with God. Why do I want you to be encouraged with this word? It's because there's a cheap cornerstone. He's ready to embrace. He's ready to fill you with his goodness. Now listen, being sheltered, we don't get uh, impacted by the issues of life like we did before. It's been minimized, right? Because we don't drive, we don't get... We'll get crazy on the streets, you know. We're going to go all the way to the market and somebody cut in front of you, blah, blah, blah. All those scenarios you probably haven't thought of that, that you know, we minimize the, the, the sociability of each other coming in contact and having issues. But I want to tell you, church, in this life, you will feel pain. You will feel sorrow. At times, feel broken and undone. You may feel abandoned. You may feel destitute. But I pray... Now listen, church, I pray that you would ask the Holy Spirit's help. I believe if you ask the person of the Holy Spirit for help, the Holy Spirit would say this. And that you don't give yourself enough credit. But I believe that you would call on the Holy Spirit, church. The Holy Spirit would say, son, daughter, look down. You have kept your faith on the rock. The rock will not be shaken. For this rock is Jesus, my chief corner stone. You see, church is not entertainment. Church is not to make you feel good and go away. What church is, is built on a rock. We are built on a rock. And our Heavenly Father is alive and He is well. And He wants interaction with you and I. He wants communion. He wants you to continue to read His Word. I, in my spirit, I just put a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of just said, didn't even, I haven't even thought about increasing my, my daily word, my prayer time, my talk time with God. But we sure love our phones. Spend hours 
Some of you probably need to go to the doctor. Your, 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 your index finger is probably numb. Put some aloe vera. Because let me tell you. Come on, can everybody look at this? Ready? How many know everybody knows this motion? Ready? It's either. Or this. Ready? You see my thumb? You can do it standing up. You can do it what? Sitting down. You can do it what? Hey, where are you? I'm over here. Are you busy? Yes. Listen, if we could count how many slides. Oh, if we could count how many times we swipe. And if we could put that energy in the word. If we could put that energy in prayer. Watch this. If you could put that energy in just obeying the word, it says, be still. And know that I am God and I'm about to speak to you. Mm. I just believe in this moment that we are, we should have more times that we hear the voice of the Lord. And I believe he's spoken. He says, will you speak to me? And I, I don't know. I just believe the enemy is trying to rob us. Because we're sheltered doesn't mean we're sheltered away from our relationship. He's faithful. Now listen, I was just gonna I was gonna read just a verse from Psalms 118, but as we begin to read it, I want to tell you what happens when you and I allow the voice of God to ring within our spirit and it becomes Matthew 5, 6 that there's a hunger and thirst for Jesus. There's a hunger and thirst for the word, there's a hunger and thirst for the kingdom of God. And when it, and it's passing us by. It's passing us by. And because it hasn't been normal, it's been abnormal in our walk with God. It really has. God don't hate. Please, I'm not saying to hate. God's hating on you or God's upset. God is waiting for you. So you in my walk, in my personal life, there's been battles and struggles. And the Lord says, I'm still here, son. I'm still building you. I'm still, I'm in control. Give me of yourself and see what I can what? Do. Our church, if we can wake up. I'm telling you, a lot of people are saying, I can't wait till it's over because I'm going to give God this. and I'm going to visit there and I'm going to be at church. We've heard that when the Passion of the Christ came out, right? We've heard that with other things that come out. And after, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. God wants you to come after him. Before this thing, in this thing, after this thing, for the rest of our life, come after God. You know that scripture about a runner that runs the race. We run and win a prize. Amen. It doesn't say only run it when you feel like it or only run it after the coronavirus. Run it after the storm. Run it. I don't know. You run. As an athlete runs every single moment and every single time because our faith is not locked on circumstance or the storm, but our faith is in the one that comes it all. Jesus Christ. Now, please, Psalm 118, I write this down, 122, someone needs to hear it. The Lord kept telling me, say, say it, somebody needs to hear this today. Somebody, and I've read it many times, you may say, I've read it many times, but the, someone needs to hear it. Let your spirit be open to the word, for the word is life. The word is truth, amen? And it says, Psalms 118, 1 through 22, please follow along, please listen, please write this down. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. I want, I want to encourage you with the Lord just put, put it in my spirit. And you know your names. You put your name in there. But listen to the next one. And as I kept reading, he says, John, put your family name in there. Put your name in there. I said, well, look at verse 3 of 118. It says, let the house of Aaron say, his love endures forever. Let, let the house of Brenda, let the house of Ray, let the house of Angie, let the house of Val, let the house.
cause of the rays. Let the, I'm telling you, God is saying, wake up because I am alive and I'm ready to pour who I am in your life. But I need to hear the voice of this earth that is saying, let the house of Aaron say, his love endures forever. Let the house of Davila say, his love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love endures forever. When hard pressed, I cried to the Lord. He brought me into a spacious place. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can, uh, what can mere mortals do to me? The Lord is with me. Did you hear that? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I look in triumph on my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princess. All the nations surrounding me. Here we go. I, I'm, I'm going to stay here for a little bit. But in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. They surrounded me on every side. But listen, but in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. They swarmed around me like bees, but they were consumed as quickly as burning thorns. Why? In the name of the Lord, I cut them down. I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Listen. I want to encourage you. You need to cut some things down in your life. You need to cut some things down in your relationship. You need to cut down fear. You need to cut down uncertainty. You need to cut down doubt. And whatever is keeping you back from going in God. Why? Because you can do this in the name of the Lord. Can I get a praise? Hallelujah. He is worthy. He's worthy. Come on, church family. Those online, he is saying, you got to cut things. No, 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 no. No, you know what? I'm going to keep everything on me. I'm going to live the way I want to, and I'm going to add God to it. It ain't going to work. That's not what his word says. You're going to have to cut it out of your life. You need to cut those things that are not of God. Cut them out of you. I can't do it. You know why? You're not called to do it. You're supposed to say, in the name of the Lord, I cut out this addiction. I cut out this negative. I cut out this spirit. Why? Because in the name of the Lord, all things are. That's right, church. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, what happens? Can I tell you? When you start cutting things out of your life that don't belong. Are you ready? Something God in your life starts to happen. Something God, something of the God life starts to happen. You've been asking God, free me. God, I need your help. But God has been telling you, cut it out. Cut it down. Get rid of it. No, 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 no. Cut it down. Lord, I can't. I know you can. Until you fully get in me, then you can use my name that is above every name to cut anything down that holds you hostage. Hallelujah. Uh, can I tell you what happens when you obey the word of God and in the name of the Lord you start cutting things down? Can I tell you what's going to happen to that person's life? Do you want to know? Do you want to know those online? Look at verse 15. There's a shout. Only the kingdom can bring. I said there's a shout. Only the kingdom can bring. What are you talking about? Oh, in the name of the Lord, you start cutting things out. Let me tell you what it begins to happen. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done many things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but live. If you want to live, if you want victory, you got to cut the stuff out that doesn't belong, that is unrighteous, that is ungodly, and you cannot do it on your own until someone surrenders to the authority of God, then you can use that authority in the name of Jesus to start coming the junk out of your life. Hallelujah. He's faithful. Woo. I will not die, but live. I will not die, but live. Guess what? In my living, I will proclaim what the Lord has done. Ooh, I don't know 
about you. I, I thank God that he loves me. How do I know that he loves me? Verse 18, the Lord has chastened me, chastened me severely. That's okay. I said, that's okay. Lord, you can knock me to the ground so I can see up. <laughs> but you know what's the beautiful thing? That when he chastises you and he corrects you and you feel like you're at your lowest, can I tell you, but he has not given me over to death. Hallelujah. He hadn't given me over to the enemy. He hadn't given me over to the addiction. He hadn't given me over to the circumstance because I gave myself over to him. He chastised me. He corrected me. He loves me, but he didn't let me die in the process. Can I get an amen? He is faithful and just in all his ways. In verse 19, open for me the gates of the righteous. Woo! When we cut things out and let God be in control, what does his word say? In verse 19, I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. I will, I will enjoy the spoils of the kingdom. I will be a benefactor of the blood of Jesus Christ. I will be a benefactor of my obedience of faith unto the Lord. Verse 20, this is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. Verse 21, I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. Listen, the Lord doesn't want to be your sidekick. He don't want to be your crutch. He wants to save you through and through. Huh? God didn't save you to still love. God did not save you to continue to love the things of this world. Uh, that's what they did in the Old Testament. That's what they do now. You cannot add God to your livelihood. Because our livelihood ain't no good. It's when we surrender our life over to God and take on the livelihood of the king according to his word and live in righteousness and we realize the things we were holding on to, we don't want them anymore. Can I get an amen? Woo! It's just going to rob you of his truth. And verse 22, listen, others may say no to him, others may reject him, but you and I, we say yes to him. Verse 22, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's my life. He's my ambition. He's my desire. He's my dream. He's my hunger. Oof. You see that? I, I'm just being real. And so, well, it wasn't like that before. I, I guess not. God got into the space where I thought I had a right and authority to keep him away from. Oh. I know that's speaking to a lot of people. When you still believe you have a right to keep something that isn't right, we still got to honor, I must decrease so he can increase. Isaiah 33, verse 6. Woof. Isaiah 33, verse 6. In that day, he will be your sure foundation. Providing a rich store of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord will be your treasure. When you learn how to respect the word of God and live for it, oh, you're going to find the treasures of that. You, because you respect him and his word and his truth. Listen, you may be shaken in this life, but our God will never be shaken. You may be shaken in this life, but our God will never be shaken. On this side of life, you will feel pain, you will feel sorrow, but the ground you are standing on, church, the foundation, that rock, his name is Jesus. He is our comforter. He is your comforter. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. All praise to God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. What is he saying? He is with us. He is Emmanuel, which means God what? Well, you no, know, he wasn't with me in the situation. Listen, if you're not serving the Lord, God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere, amen? But if he, you want him to be with you, you need to be with him. James 4, 7 says, Submit then unto the Lord, and resist the devil, and he will flee from 
Flee from me. Saint Corinthians chapter 1, <coughs> verse 3. He's Emmanuel God with us. He's here. He's right there. But if you want to see him activated and move and see his power, you must be in a relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You will go through many things in this life, church. But your faith that is founded in God, I said, but your faith that is founded in God will encourage you and tell you, son, daughter, who am I? I love the Holy Spirit. Because we think we know stuff, and even God knows you are so arrogant, you are so ignorant, but I still love you. And he brings this Holy Spirit, and they'll go, John, and say, son Ray, daughter Val, daughter Sherry, I love you. And it's like that, that, that subconscious tap, right? It's on the shoulder. But the way God taps me is this. Wake up. You already know by the spirit in my word that that's not right. So why are you trying to figure out how to do it anyway? Come on, we've been there. God says, Mija, don't, hijo, hijo que no. Why are you doing, I would, God says, listen, I'm with you, but listen, you got to be with me. James 4, 7, submit then unto the Lord. You got to submit to him. You got to submit to his ways. Psalm 118, 22, we've heard it before, just to reiterate this verse. Psalm 118, verse 22. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Oh, I don't know about you. Listen, maybe you were one at one time that said, I don't want to hear I don't want to hear what you have to say, right? I don't want to hear what you... Now you're on the other side of the coin, right? Now you're telling others about Jesus. And it's like you almost see a reflection. Again, I don't want to hear that. That's not why I asked you here. I don't want to hear about God. And now you're saying, no, don't be the one that rejects him. Be the one that accepts him. And learn to live on his promises and his goodness. Listen, Jesus has been rejected by many. And will continue to be rejected by some in this life. But you and I, church, amen. You and I, we have said, amen. He has become my chief cornerstone. He has become my rock, my truth. He's my stability. He's my sure foundation. And guess what? I can trust him. I said, I can trust him. Now, some of us can relate to this, that we've had a broken heart. And my spirit has been crushed because of circumstances and people. But can I tell you, we can stand on this rock, Jesus Christ, and say, but no more. Amen. No more. My foundation is in the Lord. And my Lord is according to his word. Psalm 34 Verse 18. My foundation is on this Christ. According to his word in Psalm 34, 18. Some of you said you've been broken hearted, right? You've been crushed. But can I tell you, he is so beautiful. Our God, and I know this, but how can you not run after God and do whatever it takes to stay with him? Amen. And keep developing your relationship with him. Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Amen. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Oh, I've had my spirit crushed a good handful of times and we stay in our blood. We're like, nobody wants me. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares. And your Abba Father is sitting on his throne and saying, he don't say it like this, but we say this saying on this side, but I'm like, chop beef. When am I just going to come to me when 
You've exhausted all your fleshly resources. He said, listen, I love you. Do you understand? You're broken. I know you're broken hearted, but that's why I'm here. I'm the mender of the what? Broken heart. He's the rescuer of all those spirits that are crushed through this life. Psalm 147, verse 3. Does he leave us this way? No, not your Abba Father, not your Daddy. Psalm 147, 3 says this. He doesn't leave you like this. You know what he does? When we trust him and we run to him and we come to him in faith, he heals the broken hearted. Hallelujah. And binds up their wounds. I don't know about you. There's just been days when you're by yourself and you're praying and you're saying, God, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I want to do this. Lord, I don't want to live anymore. Lord, I don't want to do this anymore. Lord, why has this happened to me? Why has this not come to me? Why? He says, listen, you're doing it your way. But if you allow me to do it my way, I can heal your heart. If you let me enter in and come in as I knock at that door, I will bind up every wound that you receive from a child to an adult, and I will take care of you. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Our God is faithful. And I just want to reiterate and encourage church. Who is our foundation? Hallelujah. There is no other foundation. That's right. For our faith.